So what I'm going to show you how to do is to use uh, RegBuild, which is some computer software authored by John Crawford. Uh, this software is available from John Crawford's website, Aberdeen University. So this is the page. And if you search within this page for RegBuild, uh, you will find not only the software, but also a paper which describes the underlying methodology. So if you click here, uh, you can download the programs um, and get using them. I happen to be using them on a Mac, which is just slightly more complicated um, in terms of how the software can be run, but there are various ways in which you can do that. Um, so what I'm going to show you today is how to compare WISC scores over time. Um, so these are IQ scores with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So we can pre-populate some of these boxes with the mean and standard deviation of the population score, standard scores at um, time one and time two, in this case, X and Y. So if I fill these, you can see that there's some empty boxes here. Um, and here we put the individual scores. So let's assume that an individual scores 108 in terms of general ability or full scale IQ at time one, and let's say 97 at time two. And what we're particularly interested in is whether these scores are statistically significantly different. So here we have a predictor variable from time one, 108, and the obtained score at time two, which is 97. So we already know that WISC scores have a mean of 100, standard deviation of 15, so our mean and standard deviation for the predictor, the variable x and variable y, are both the same, 100 and 15 for mean and standard deviation correspondingly. Um, the two boxes that are empty here are what we need from the WISC technical manual. So we have here the correlation between the predictor and the criterion variable, in this case the test-retest correlation between WISC scores over time, and the sample size. Now the sample size um, is the sample size used to derive that correlation. So I'm just going to show you just how easy it is to find that data in the WISC uh, technical manual. So I have here a copy of the WISC te technical manual from Q Interactive. Now I happen to know on page 39 of the technical manual you have um, evidence of test retestability taken from 243 children. Um, so the sample size that we need to put into RegBuild is 243. And the next piece of information, the final piece of information we need is the test retest correlation for full scale IQ. So here we have a correlation. These here are corrected correlations. So the correlation that is derived from that sample of over 200 children in terms of test retestability is 0.93. So that's what we put into this box there. So now we have all our data, which enables us to ascertain the likelihood that an IQ score of 108 um, has declined to a um, score of 97, and whether that decline is statistically significant. So we click on Compute, and here we get a lot of information. Um, I'll just point out the salient information that we're interested in. Um, here you get a summary of the input that we've put in, a regression equation, which summarizes the um, relationship between x, the predictor, and y, the predicted variable. And here we have the individual's predicted score based on the predictor. So we started with an IQ of 108, and our predicted score is 107. So it's very similar given the high stability of risk scores. There's some regression to the mean, uh, hence the score is slightly lower than the, the actual score at time one. Um, and the discrepancy between the actual score and the predicted score is 10. So the score is um, 10 points lower than we would expect. Um, and here we have the probability. So the likelihood of that occurring by chance is less than 0.03. So that's below our um, typical conventional threshold of 0 0.05. So uh, the statistically significant um, evident decline in terms of numerical IQ. So it's as simple as that. So if we clear the results, I can just show you once more um, if we return to that worksheet. Here we have our standard scores, mean of 100, standard deviation of 15, the correlation which is derived from page 39 of the uh, WISC manual, the sample size for that correlation of study, 243, and the individuals that obtained scores at time one and time two. Um, 
the methodology is incredibly general. So if we wanted to look at stability of verbal comprehension indices, we would still be putting 115 in as our mean and standard deviation for each variable, but this time we would be using a correlation of 0 0.93. Um, we can also use the same methodology to look at the correlation between um, ABAS scores, for example, anything that we can find in the uh, manual. I'll just get the right page up here. Page 73 shows the correlation between the ABAS, Adaptive Behaviour Scale, um, and WISC scores. So if we had some adaptive behaviour ratings made by parents and WISC scores, we could determine whether those scores were statistically in line with each other, in line with predictions. Um, here the orientation isn't particularly helpful, um, but what we're looking for is the relationship between the correlations between the ABAS scores and corresponding IQ scores. So here we have full-scale IQ, and if we track along, here the correlation between full-scale IQ and the general adaptive composite is 0.41, so that's the correlation that we're interested in using. Uh, we also need, of course, this sample size, which is 122. So if, for example, we were looking at of our scores, we've got a sample size of 122. The correlation here is a modest 0.41. Our mean in terms of the predictor variable here would be 115. Again, we use these standardized scores with that conventional uh, distribution. And the individual score and the predictor variable, in this case, the ABAS score or the WISC score, let's say we're predicting ABAS from WISC, so our WISC score is 109. Um, just plucking these figures out of the air, and let's say our ABAS score is 96. So what we're interested in determining is, is the ABAS score of 96 in line with predictions based on um, an IQ of 109? Now that's based on a rather modest correlation between ABAS scores and IQ, which will mean that um, there can be fairly large deviations, which will be not significant. And that's indeed what we find here. So if you look at the probability of that ABAS score being predicted by the IQ score within um, chance, uh, it's non-significant. So it's quite likely that differences of that magnitude could occur, occur quite spontaneously uh, by chance without there needing um, to be any um, significant underlying discrepancy between those scores. So that's how it's done. So uh, I will be posting this video and maybe some other videos.